Welcome to the Coop Tank. I'm your host, Steve Cooper, coming to you from sweet recording in beautiful Mount Laurel, New Jersey. You know, every Friday when I record, it rains, but today was sunny, and that makes me so happy, and we have great guests today, but before we get to them, my buddy Joe Ganjami is going to tell you about how great Sweet Recording is. So, Joe, tell us all about this place. Hey, Coop. You're the man. Thank you so much. Yes, at Sweet Recording, we help brands and businesses to leverage the power of podcasting and YouTube to generate quality content for their uh, for their brands or businesses um, and to expand their audience in a unique and fun way. We can help you to launch your podcast and... We can help you with everything from planning all the way through to publication on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, all those platforms. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, you can contact us anytime at hello at sweetrecording.com or visit us on the web at sweetrecording.com. That's S-U-I-T-E. Take it away, Coop. All right. So we have a great show today. First, we have from New Jersey Advanced Media, Steve Phones. How you doing, Steve? How you doing, Steve? Good to see you. Good, Good to see you. Here. And then from Media Friendly Public Relations, my buddy, Cheryl Squadrito. How you doing, Cheryl? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me. And finally, a person I know through networking from HFM Investment Advisors, we have Catherine Allen Carlozo. How are you doing, Catherine? Good, and thank you for the invitation. I'm looking forward to this. All right. Uh, Steve, we're going to start with you. Tell us what what you do. What, what's your job, New Jersey Advanced Media? Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so I'm a digital marketing consultant for NJ Advanced Media, and simply we help companies get in front of the right customers with the right message, you know, on the right platform, right? So we're a full service digital marketing firm. And our job, our goal is to really help the businesses we work with get their message out and bring in new patients, new leads, new customers, and kind of report with data and technology on how is that working? And then kind of modify it to their needs. So that's essentially what we do. Okay, Cheryl, tell me a little about Media Friendly Public Relations. Media Friendly, um, it was founded back in 2005 and our specialty is getting our clients on TV, in, in the media, on, in print. Um, it's similar to what Steve does, but um, we do digital, but we specialize in media coverage. So we'll tell your company's story. We'll get you on television and the news. We'll get you on talk shows. Um, our goal is to create a positive message for your business and your brand. And we're located in Haddonfield, New Jersey, but we do serve the world. Okay. And how about you, Catherine? So I am a uh, certified financial planner. Uh, also, I got another designation as a registered social security analyst because um, it's lots of information that people need to understand at some point in their lives. Um, we are a uh, fee-based only uh, registered investment advisory firm. So we do uh, financial planning, investment management, and we also do, um, we help companies with their 401ks as well. And um, just trying to be the guide for the person who's, you know, they're the hero in their story and we're just there to get them through all the obstacles and create a happy ending for them. All right. Well, you know, everyone has different jobs and we all, we all change, a lot of us change careers. I mean, it's just, it's the way of the world now. It's not like you sit around in the old days and work 50 years and get a watch, you know? And we all have a story and I, and I always love to hear stories. And I'm gonna start with you, Cheryl, cause I know oh, you have boy. like a really cool story. You know, I mean, you were, you know, a, big shot writer and all that, but tell us, tell us how you got to where you are with media friendly. Well, um, I'll try to keep it short. Um, I was a music journalist, um, but I started out when I was about 15, just before my 16th birthday. Um, I called a band I liked management who was in England and set up an interview with the band called the members. That's the album that inspired me to go into music writing. And I, didn't tell them. I said it was my school paper. They thought I was in college. I didn't tell them otherwise that I was only a sophomore in high school. And I got an interview, met the band and spent time with them. And it changed my life because I realized, wow, I can actually tell stories of, of, of these rock stars. I found out the hard way. I wasn't a very good singer and I'm not a musician. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to hear any of that. Um, so I focused on writing and I started writing very, very young, 15, like I said, I worked for Melody Maker Magazine in England when I was in college. I have an affinity for London. Um, and then um, I was the first female music writer at the Philadelphia Inquirer. I wore down that door. Um, I was so persistent because there was so much competition 
especially, um, you know, it was hard for a woman to do that, but I did it, sharp elbows. And uh, so, you know, I was worked at the Empire, head entertainment writer, and I left for the Courier Post. And so I have some different kind of journalism background, used that background of being a reporter. And in 2005, when my kids were small, I made the leap of faith and started Media Friendly. And I never looked back. And I have been working. Um, I tried to walk away from the rock and rollers, didn't work. I still work with bands when they need me. Right now I'm marketing my, my husband's band. Uh, Steve was, I think, alluding to the story that um, I ended up marrying the guitar player and the members who's right there. Um, we reconnected 40 years later after that first night I met them. Um, who would have thunk? Um, but yeah, so I'm marketing bands, but my real sweet spot uh, is telling stories for uh, pretty much any business, but my sweet spot is attorneys, um, financials, uh, cannabis companies. Cannabis companies really need my help right now um, because they're so maligned. And you know, pretty much large nonprofits that work with women and children, um, they're my sweet spots. So um, that is the shortest version I've ever told of my whole story. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I leave up journalism for PR, and um, yeah, I'm really good at keeping those connections going. And if you want a guitar lesson, I will twist my husband's arm, and he will he will give you a guitar lesson um, if you want one. But he's a brilliant guitarist. Nigel Bennett is his name. And uh, at the end of the show, I'll be promoting a show that I'm doing with Nigel uh, March 31st, uh, March 30th. I mean, we'll, we'll get to 30th, that later. Yes. Uh, yeah, see, that's great. I promote my own stuff the wrong date. Catherine. Okay, let, let me stick with the promotion on that one. So. Okay, we'll let you know. <laughs> Catherine, how, how did you get into what you do? Where, how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those stories that um, wasn't what I had planned when I was younger. Um, just one of those things where you were looking for a job and I was an assistant way back when, 1985. And um, at, long story short, as I was working for financial advisors in the industry, I was um, realizing that clients started calling me for doing trades or back then we were more stockbrokers. And um, and I just decided if these people can do it, then I can do it. And then I just kept moving on getting all my licenses and registrations. And then you get to a point where you're like, if I wanted to change a career, I don't even think I could because I knew I would lose all that. And because um, I remember back in 2002, July of 2002, and we had just gotten through uh, the absolute worst of the um, the tech bubble, and then 9/11 was in 2001, and you know we were like, oh, it's the catalyst. And I remember in July of 2002, the market just kept going down, 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 down. I was living in Connecticut at the time, and I remember calling my dad on the phone at the time, and he and I said, Dad, I just have nothing left in my pom poms. I'm trying to cheer people on. I'm trying to tell them it's going to get better. And and I would just come home drained, mentally exhausted. And he said to me, well, maybe you should um, leave that industry and become a realtor. And um, which I never did. You know, I stuck by it. And in a sense, I'm kind of glad I didn't because then we had the real estate bubble, which happened in like 2008, 2009. But um so I've, I've been in this industry since 1985 and uh, became an advisor in 1995. So um, so I've been doing this for a really long time, but it's just, if you asked me what I would have done, you know, when I was in my twenties going through college, I'd probably be like a history professor. <laughs> oh, well, that's always good. Well, how about you, Steve? Cause I know, I know you, uh, you recently started a new job and uh, tell me what, what was the path to you to where you are now? Sure, sure. So yeah, I'm relatively new, a few months into my role at NJ Advance. And it's interesting, I used to work for a marketing advertising firm way back when. It's kind of always been a thing, passion of mine and background. Took a little break from that and uh, was in the training environment for a while. But, you know, all the while I, I said to my, you know, 
I really want to get back into this. Where can I do it? Where can I have an impact? I mean, I like helping people. I like helping businesses get what they're looking to do, right? So this gave me the opportunity to do it. And I feel like the company is great. The people, the support uh, is awesome. So yeah, it's definitely a learning experience, especially at this point in my career, right? But it's exciting. It's very... Uh, it's, it's enlivening, it's refreshing to kind of, you know, learn all about the digital marketing world and kind of what's changed in the last five, 10, 15 years. So it's kind of where, where I am today. Okay. Now here's a question, you know, if we, if we go on LinkedIn, you know, no one has a weakness. Everybody's great. You know, every, everyone's an expert. That's LinkedIn. You know, you sit there and we'll get to LinkedIn later, but they, everyone's like, oh, I'm this, like, but we all have weaknesses. Like me, I'm a big procrastinator and both personal life and professionally i mean my closet's a mess and my wife's like are you gonna clean that you have like 400 t-shirts in the wrong way so we all have weaknesses but people don't like to talk about them but they're so important because if you meet someone at an event you say hey you know what i need help with this most of the time people will help you i mean that's the thing people are afraid to ask for help but what's a weakness that you have that you say i need to work on and we'll start with you catherine what's a weakness you have is there's got to be something oh yeah sure um, other than chocolate, because I am a chocoholic, uh, I'm be the first to admit that. Um, I, I've learned that I can. Uh, I'm not on. I'm not as creative with my brain, so I need someone to help me on on that level. So if I'm trying to do something with uh, whether I'm, um, I don't know, trying to market myself or or come up with something then, um, and there's a really good book out called Who Not How, um, because you think about, well, how am I going to do this? And then you really have to ask the question, who can help me do this? So it, it took me a while, but I, you learned that, or I learned that I can't, I can't be everything. I'm not the creative one. I can help you with your financial planning. I can come up with recommendations, but when it comes to like, you know what Cheryl and Steve are talking about with with the marketing idea uh, that is not that is one of my weaknesses I am not you know or I just have all these different ideas and you need someone to kind of help you bring it together and see what works okay how about you Steve what, what's one of your weaknesses well there's many so I'll keep it brief I mean <laughs> I, I, I mean I guess it's sim not maybe too dissimilar but uh probably asking, you know, not knowing what I don't know, right? Like, I think I can mm -hmm. figure everything out myself, which isn't true, right? But I think I've learned over the years, if I don't know something, don't be afraid to ask, right? So it's something I have to work on, but uh, it's like just trying to figure out, somebody knows more about this than me, who do I ask, you know, or who do I know that can direct me to the right person? So I constantly work on that. How about you, Cheryl? Um, sometimes I think, too big. Um, I could scale it. I can do it. And I have these, like, for example, doing a big event and I love doing big events. And, but my problem is I put so much of myself into it that days later, I'm still suffering. Um, like, it's just, I put my emotion, it's like running a marathon for me really fast. And so I've had to learn to, um, plan my time a little better. And in the sense that, um, what I do these big events to really take care of myself and be and ask people like like Catherine said it's it's who and you know delegate a little bit better about um, I'm good at delegating but when it comes to these big events I have to ask for help too like what Steve said like and because if not I'm I'm just want to sleep for the whole weekend after a Friday event <laughs> so nowadays we have so much bandwidth going on you know, I mean, when we were younger, there was no internet there. I mean, it's just different now. And, and you get distracted. I mean, I sit there, I want to do something. And then I'm like, oh, look, something's on TV. You know, you're working out of the house. Oh, I'll hear my wife watching a show. Oh, I want to see that. How do you stay focused? Like in this day and age, when there's so much shit going on, that you, you don't know which way to look. We'll start with you, Cheryl, because you're the one who plans big events. And you say sometimes you try to look the grand picture. How do you stay focused on doing your job? Oh, I am a slave to my calendar. I really try to stick to my calendar and like day to day, what I have to do is I have to have either white noise on or like day to day to stay focused. 
And I, I cut my teeth in a newsroom and there could not be more distractions than a newsroom. There's bells, whistles, faxes back then. So I just really try to manage my time and give myself an end date. And um, that's the other thing I have to do is just have rock and roll on and music playing. That's how I stay focused. Is okay. that your, did I answer your question? Yeah, you did. I, I, Cause I get focused with music too. I always will put a good song on. on. And the one song that always gets me focused, I don't know why, what makes me uplifting is uh, it's uh What's so funny about Peace, Love, and Understanding by Elvis Costello oh, or um, Overkill by, uh, by like Men at Work? They, all just, they, all, at yeah, work. they just get me in a good idea. So anyway, so Steve, um, how do you stay focused? Well, they, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Cheryl. No, I was just going to say the song that gets me going is um, Sister Disco by The Who. And okay. then I have a whole playlist of writing. I don't know why, but it's an upbeat song and makes you want to sing along. So... Maybe we can ask each other what their favorite song is to work to. No, yeah, well, we'll we get to my them? question. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll find out. They, they, add, that, add that in the question sorry, about the song you like to It's all right. See, that she's, she's a PR person. She's taking over. It's okay. I can't help okay. it. Do sorry. my job. I'm fine. I'll just sit here. Sorry, sorry, wow. sorry. I, I, it makes it easy on me. It makes it easy on me. Steve, okay, so what keeps you focused, and what is a song that picks you up? Okay, wow. Steve. <laughs> so what can, yeah, I'd say music keeps me focused. I... I you know, have like mellow music on in the background when I'm working, so it's not distracting. If I have lyrics, it's, you know, too much. But, um, you know, I also do meditation every day, kind of keep me grounded, I guess, and focused throughout the course of the day. And then I guess time blocking too, right? Which is not always easy to execute, but uh, if I don't have it on the calendar, it, it doesn't, doesn't happen. So I need those kind of barriers around my schedule. And what song? What song gets you up, man? I, I would say anything by Van Halen, probably. I mean, I'm always any hard rock, rock and roll music like that. I mean, you really got me comes to mind. So, okay, that's good. My favorite Van Halen song is "Ain't Talk About Love." It's always been. Uh, how about how about you, Catherine? What 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 gets you focused? And then tell us the song that gets you pumped. Okay, well, um, and I I get very easily distracted. So I, at least that's the first thing is I'm aware of that. A um, couple things, and I just learned this recently, but, but similar, it's got to be on my calendar. Um, and I now, you know, you have a work calendar, you have a personal calendar. So everything has to go on my work calendar because otherwise it's happened where somebody will schedule an appointment for me. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, I, I have a hair appointment. So... Um, so I have to make sure that really my personal stuff, it, and I, and I'm very, or the team that we have here, thank goodness for them, because um, some of the power planners, they're the ones that help me schedule things and keep me scheduled. Um, and I, and even when we're meeting a client, if we're doing a review, you know, they have to kind of, because I can talk. So you have to kind of rein me in sometimes. So, you know, otherwise I'll just you know, keep talking. Anyway, um, there's a thing called uh, chunking on your calendar. So if you do a time block, which I used to do, it I'd be like, well, I'm going to work on my business plan, you know, for the next three hours. I would never do it because I can't focus that long. I can't even watch movies for two hours anymore. I get easily like I if I do binge watching, then Thank God I can do binge watching because I know the episode's over in 50 minutes and then I can pause it or I can get up or whatever. So chunking is like if I'm working on a business plan or something, then I know that, well, for these first 10 minutes, I'm going to send these emails. And then the next 10 minutes, I'm going to uh, call this client or something. So it's that's what they but what that's what they mean by chunking. And um and then there's another thing, and it's called the five second rule. And it's not the one where if you drop food down and you pick it up, because I do believe in that rule, um, is if you feel like you're getting out of focus. So I've been working on this is you literally stop and you count down five, four, three, two, one. It does something to your brain. Who the hell knows? I don't know, but it's supposed to help you refocus for music. Uh, as much as I love classic rock, and I do, and I am married to a 
a person who for this you know he loves his drums and he's very good but i am a uh, old disco queen so um and i do zumba so anything that's like hip-hop uh you know pitbull or anything like that is really that that's what gets me moving all right you know, it's funny, the five second rule i swear I, I i believe that i mean i think i've walked by and i found like a week old frito and i picked it off the floor and my wife's like what are you doing i go it's a frito it's, it's not there's no dust yeah. does it look clean i eat it so yeah unless there's an ant on it then, exactly, you, exactly. then you'll throw it away right so so you know as we get older our lives change and, and i think the definition of success changes and i want to know what for you now, and we'll start with you, Steve, for you now at this moment in your life, what is success to you? Because it's different, I'm sure, than when you were 21, but what's success for you, Steve? Yeah, that's a good question. It does change, right? You know, when you're younger, you think success is about, you know, money and, you know, possessions and getting all these things. And, you know, as I've gotten older, it's changed, right? But I think it's just a sense of, fulfillment, knowing that your family is taken care of, um, knowing that you've got a positive support group, you know, whether it's family or friends, coworkers, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, knowing that you're like pursuing your passion too, right? Like, am I doing what I really want to be doing in order to either help other people or to help my family, whatever it may be that kind of lights you up on a day-to-day -day basis and staying on that course. That's success to me. Okay. How about you, Catherine? What's success to you now? Well, very similar to Steve. Um, and, and I agree with, I mean, it's great to make money, right? Cause we all want to make money um, because we want to have that financial freedom someday, but that's not, um, the level of success, because I, I know people who are, they're social workers, and they don't make a lot of money, but they're very successful. And because again, like Steve said, there, there's a passion. And it took me a long time in my career to really build the passion of what I do. And, and it's just evolved for me. So for me, it's rewarding to, or being successful is to help uh, people create that, uh, you know, I know it's a cliche, but financial freedom for them or to make sure that they feel peace of mind. Um, but another big component for me is, um, is the giving back, uh, because I feel that, you know, you can, you can be successful, but unless you are truly giving back, whether it's monetarily, but it doesn't even have to be, you know, I'm on the board for Habitat for Humanity and and um, it's trying to help people um, and or or mentoring in my in at where I am because I'm older so I can do mentoring, which I never had when I was younger. Um, and just doing like in a sense, almost like pro bono work. So if some if somebody has questions or if they're trying to get it themselves in a better position financially or or career-wise or something, that's really success for me to help. Okay, how about you, Cheryl? What's success for you? I, I have to agree with Catherine about you know, doing pro bono work and helping out and being on boards. That's very important for me. Um, Work-wise uh, um, as well, I like telling people stories. I get really pumped when my client does does a good thing and I get to share it with the world. That makes me very fulfilled. Um, professionally, um, for my family, I have good, my kids are good human beings. I did my job. So that was very, that was very satisfying and fulfilling and fulfilling. And I think the thing that I, I, I didn't realize I do really well is I keep in touch with friends who I've had all my life. And I'm very lucky that way to me, to me, that's, that's success. And it's really fulfilling. Um, and thanks to technology, like WhatsApp, I could talk to my college roommate who lives in England every day. Um, but I had to write that down because I'm going to, I'm going to keep this list that I just told you <laughs> to keep on my desk to remind myself that yes, um, I have success every day. This See this. that? There you go. You learn something when you come in the coop tank. There's something about yourself. Now, here's something about yourself. We're going to start with you, Cheryl. Uh -oh. um, your personality. <laughs> what is a strong part of your personality that 
makes you do well in socializing, networking your job. Like me, I can make people laugh. I'm an introvert. And people don't believe that. I don't. I, I sit there. You know, I go to an event. I don't need to talk to everybody. I want someone who's interesting. I, I'll talk to them. I don't want to talk to some asshole who's blowing smoke up my ass. I don't want to deal with that stuff. But you know, but my personality, I think I try. I can be funny. I can make people laugh. Now, what's a what's a strong point in your personality that has helped you in your career? We'll start with you, Cheryl. I know I sometimes scare people because I'm very um, <laughs> bullet. I am me, like I am me. And I'm, um, but I think my personality is, uh, I'm very curious and I love to hear people's stories. And sometimes I'll have to talk to them until I figure out what their story is. Um, and that was why I was a good journalist. That's why I like PR. Um, but I think my, that has helped me in my business too, is being curious, digging a little deeper, finding a better story, finding, um, but I think that's it, my curiosity. Plus, I'm genuine. Like, if I ask you a question, I mean it. Like, I'm not just making small talk. I'm like you. I'm, believe it or not, I'm an introvert inside. Um, but I like hearing people's stories. And I, I, I like um, hearing what, what they have going on in their lives. And that I think that genuine quality that I have comes through. Because I can't, I cannot BS somebody. That is just, I, and I just can't. And for my profession, I know a lot of my colleagues might but I can't do that. All right. And how about you, Steve? What, what's the personality? Yeah, I mean, I kept a few things. Or, but firstly, sincerity, I think, is the first part of it, right? You just got to be yourself, and you have to have a genuine interest in other people. Because if you don't, to your point, Steve, it's BS, and most people don't like that, right? So while I'm sincere, I'm not necessarily serious all the time either. So um, I think that's super important. But also asking, like, good questions, right? Like what's important to other people? Like, cause people love to talk about themselves and I love to learn about people, right? It's not uh, about me, it's about them. And having that genuine interest in what other people do, it creates connection, I think. I mean, okay, how, about, how about you, Catherine? Uh, well, I think we're all using the same word genuine. Um, and like Cheryl, I'm, I'm always, I'm a very curious person. Um, I'm not an introvert, I am an extrovert all the way around. Doesn't mean I don't like to be by myself because I do like that as well. But especially when, I, I think one of my strong um, traits is I'm empathetic. So I think, I think people see that in me where they know that I am, I am authentic and I, and I really do have that uh, empathy for them and and that they know that I'm being sincere that I want to help them when you're out networking as you know Steve um, and we all have heard this term before go giver uh, which is huge because like you just said you can tell if someone is whether they're a go-giver when you're networking mm -hmm. right and and that is where you are genuinely wanting to learn about that person and how you can help them versus a go taker and the go taker is that person that just says well what do you do for a living blah 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 and you what do you do for a living blah 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 and then that person is trying to figure out should i have any more conversation with this person or are they just gonna be a waste of my time um so i i think the go giver is something that has helped me a lot too as as one of my um when i'm definitely when i'm networking but to to be genuine and know that um it it, it'll, it'll reciprocate at some point, but you do have to, um, what, what is it in it for the other person, not necessarily me? Okay. You know, we're going to stay on networking uh, because networking is very important. That's how I've met most of you people. And it's, I was at an event uh, a while ago and someone introduced me and they said about my show and this person was asking me questions. I didn't know this person. They said, oh, well, how do I get on? And I said, well, you know, I have to know you a little bit. And then they didn't want to talk to me. Like they were looking around the room <laughs> and, and me, I didn't say anything. I was like, the guy, I'm not important enough for him. But the funny thing is I'm going to Ooh. say this and I'm, I'm name dropping here. Uh, a month before, I was talking to Keanu Reeves backstage at Dog Star. So this guy, I'm friends with a drummer. I can I can talk to Keanu when everyone wants to talk to him. But this guy is like, oh, I can't be on a show. I don't want to talk to him. He's looking around, you know. But that was one pro the thing I don't like about networking is when, when people are phony. But what 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 to you? What are pros and cons of networking? Like we go to an event, and Steve, you stopped by my event the other night, and. Uh, 
it gets busy. Uh, the uh, cocktails with Cooper. It's people come in. They know it's a chill place. Someone said, and I hate this term. Someone said, "This is such a safe place." Of course, it was a millennial who said that because I'm like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> come on! It's it's a networking event." You know, I mean, true, we don't have any creepy dudes trying to hit on women, but I'm like, safe place. This is networking. But what what do you like? What are you, what are some pros and cons? Uh, Catherine, because I know you network a lot. What are some pros and cons about networking that you have? Um, well, one, to meet new people, uh, but also to see people that you know. I, I feel like it's it's just we we need to feel connected. That's that's what I feel like networking is doing. And and sometimes, you, the, you know, there she is again. Like you have to show your mug. You have to show your mug. It's you got to be out there, and there are going to be times where you don't want to be out there. Um, but if you don't, then you probably shouldn't go to that event because at that point you're just going to be in the back, you know, and you're going to be grumpy, and you and you're it's you know then you'll be like, oh, that was a waste of time. So, you know, when you're networking, you have to be on, right? And all of us in our in our businesses, we have to be on. So. You, you know, you have to be mentally prepared for it too. And, but you also have to be genuine and like, hi, how are you? It's good to see you kind of thing versus, oh God, you know, get me away from that person. Um, the the cons might be like that I, that I mentioned earlier are the, the people who are not sincere or, and you can pick them out. They are the go takers and and you know that they're going to be like you just, I mean, you hit the nail on the head with this other person saying, oh, I want to be on your show and then wouldn't give you the time of day. So it, it's like that is where I feel like I've gotten I've done so much networking in my career that I can really pinpoint to an extent, you know, who the go givers are and who the go takers are. OK, how about you, Cheryl? Um, so networking, ask the question again, frame it for me. What are some pros and cons of networking? Cons. What do you like about what don't you cons. like about? Um, I, I love meeting people. I love hearing stories. So, but some nights, like Catherine said, you just don't feel like doing it and you have to turn yourself, you have to turn it on, you have to turn on for your work and do it. And there are the nights that I'm pleasantly surprised that I meet somebody new. Um, I try to, for networking, um, I go to a lot of the women-owned business ones because they seem to have a different vibe and a, a more like a sisterhood, no offense to the fellas. Um, and the cons are, um, if, you're not, if you're not in the mood to be there, it's really hard to turn it on. Um, and doing that, um, and then like, like Catherine said too, the go-takers, like I'm, I'm a giver. When I meet somebody for the first time, I'm trying to think about who do I know who I can introduce them to? Mm -hmm. Who would be a good a good person to help them out? Who would be a good resource? Um, and you know, um, you, you don't have to be in a very expensive club or anything to to do that to network. Um, the other part of networking is you never know where you're going to find it. Um, when I first started my business in '05, um, one of my first clients took my spin class. I teach spinning. That's my side hustle. Um, and he was, he took my, he knew how I was starting a business, wanted to help me out. And it was, it was great. So I network at the gym. I network my kids when they were in school, did sports. I, on the little league field, I networked. Um, and I, I feel like people knew I was genuine and that was what helped it. Um, the cons are getting out the door when you really don't feel like it. Um, and missing like something that you'd rather be going to like a Miley Cyrus concert and you have to go to an event. Um, that's just, yeah, that's my opinion. I, I'd much rather be at a show, but um, sometimes you just have to get out the door and force it's, yourself. It's funny how you said about the gym, but you know, you think about, we've always been networking. It's just now it's a big term, like back in high school or college, yeah. when, you heard, when right. someone had a party, Oh, do you know such and such? Yeah. Oh, can you, can you, can I go to the party with you? Oh yeah, and people, now it's like this big, oh, I'm a networker, but it's like you've been doing it your whole damn life. How about you, Steve? What are some pros and cons for you? Yeah, I mean, the pros are is you just never know who you're gonna meet, right? It could be the next connection that changes your life, really, right? I mean, it really can, depending on the business that you're in. Um, and then, you know, the opportunity that that brings, right? Like I could connect 
you with somebody that could be a guest on the show. Great, right? We helping each other that way. Con wise, it's time consuming, right? And picking the right event, right? You never, I'm sure we've all gone to bad networking events, but um, not yours, of course, Steve, because they're both <laughs> awesome. Seriously. And, you know, Steve is a professional, but there are, you have to really pick and choose, right? We're all busy. We've got families, we've got other stuff going on, you know? And so picking the right event that makes sense for you, your business, and, that fits with your, your lifestyle. I mean, we could probably be out five nights a week if we wanted to, right? But can't do it. It's funny, you know, the one answer that always cracks me up is, I don't know if you guys know Jack Soblin, but I said, what is pros? He goes, a good spread. I want good food. And I went, well, yeah, of course, man. That's that's the way. I hate when you go and there's just like, you know, a little crudite and you're like, what the hell, you know, what, what am I gonna eat? I didn't eat, I figured I'd eat. So it's a new year, it's uh, February, God, it's February. and. Uh, Goals. I, I'm. I, I don't. Some people write down their goals. Some people do long term plans. What is one of your goals for 2024, Steve? What is one of your goals for 2024? Great question. So it's. I kind of switch things up. I, I actually go into the gym three days a week in the morning. Uh, I realized, especially in the winter time, at the end of the day with kids and making dinner and homework, all the good stuff. Like I just wasn't going. So I'm like, all right, I got to get up a little earlier so I can make this thing happen. So it's so far so good. Okay, how about you, Cheryl? Um, I, my my resolution for the year, and it's so far so good, is to market my company, Media Friendly, the way I market my clients. Because I put myself last. I was taking care of other clients before me. And I that's, that's my business goal for the year. Um, and... My personal goal, I know it sounds cheesy, but I want to have date night every Saturday with my husband. That's my personal goal and make time. My kids are fine. They're in college. They're not around. So I don't need babysitters anymore. Um, so my personal goal is to continue with date night too with my husband. Well, that's good. And I, I like Nigel's. That's good. Yeah, you're fun. Good Nigel's man. a great guy. Um, how about you, Catherine? <laughs> um, business goals, uh, what I've been doing is just creating more activity um, on my calendar. Like that's part of my, you know, that's how I feel like I'll, I'm building my business <clears throat> by, by having, you know, very, very specific um, things on my calendar of, of who I want to reach out to, who I want to talk to, who I'm reviewing with, um, what events I'm going to, um, and, and make sure that I'm, um, I call it the, the green color in my um, on my calendar because you can do color coding and the green is for, you know, is this helping me build my business or um, and then there's other colors that are, you know, I'm doing community work or I'm doing, but there's got to be, I, I feel like I've gotten better with the business planning or the, the green side of my of my business with just creating more activity. And um, on the on the personal side, and my husband and I are very much in line right now, which is wonderful because it's very difficult when you're um, in a marriage and one person wants to grow and the other one doesn't. And we both have been doing um, a lot of this well-rounded. You know, we're trying to be more spiritual. Um, we try to do that meditation, Steve. Uh, we do it separately, but um, it's very hard for me. It does not help me focus, but it is good. Um, lots of reading, trying to eat healthier. But then again, our date night is usually a Friday night, Cheryl. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to my couple glasses of wine tonight. So, um, but that's okay. I'll go to Zumba tomorrow and burn it off. Mm -hmm. Right. See, that's what you got to do. You got to have the date night. You know, I, for me, that's it's right. like my wife always goes to the gym and she pushes me to go to the gym and I go for a few days and I stop. I, I, I just, I hate the gym. It just bores the shit out of me. I, I, I do. You got to come to Zumba. Come I, to Zumba. If I had went to Zumba, I, 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 yeah, if I went to Spinner Zumba, you'd be calling the paramedics because I would be flatlining. Okay. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say. So here's a portion <laughs> of my show, which I always talk about. And because I just, I, I love social media. I mean, I, you know, I, I got you through the, through social media, Catherine. I sent you a message on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, I keep two different pages. Uh, LinkedIn is business, my, 
Facebook page. There's a lot of stupid jokes, pictures of food, and me and my wife and all that stuff. But LinkedIn, where I like LinkedIn, and, and, and we need it for business, I've noticed, as my mom would say, a lot of people are blowing their own horn. Okay, mm-hmm. there's a lot of bullshit going on there. There's people putting stuff, as I said, the self-proclaimed expert. I had someone say they're an international podcast. Every podcast is international because it's on the internet. Like, stop being something you aren't. So what irks you? And we'll start with you, Catherine. What irks you about LinkedIn? And if you say nothing, I love it. That's fine. But there's got to be something that you go, Jesus, like you see some dude with his shirt off. I'm like, it's yeah. LinkedIn. Come on. Well, now, now, based on that, it depends on what the guy looks like. If I, if I would make a comment or not, but you know, I'm taking my shirt off the helmet. Right? Yeah, there you go. Um, exactly what you just said. I get so tired of the, of look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, and and that, and I know people have to promote themselves, but there's a there's a way to do it, um, where. Because, and particularly, and I will say this, this is my opinion or just through years of, of observation, but women are not good at tooting their own horn when it comes to a lot of things. And um, so sometimes we have to toot the horn for them, or if it's, if it's awkward, then, you know, just say, just mention something and I'll share it on LinkedIn for you. Or, you know, hey, shout out to blah, blah, blah for doing something. But then there are the people that um, it's it gets old. And and I just it's probably like anything. And I, I hate to sound crude about this. But when you see a, a dead possum on the side of the street, you just like now you're like, oh, oh, you know, poor thing. And then you drive on. And when you start to see some of these um people on on LinkedIn that are just, or if they're getting political, which is a a major no-no, I feel, because like you said, the LinkedIn is is professional. So there's not, you shouldn't be talking about, you know, your political agenda on there. Um, But also it's, you have to market yourself, but I just feel like there's a way to do it in a more professional way than than some of these people that are doing just like that. Like, you, you know, look at me, here I am again, here I am again, look at me. It's funny, you hit on the uh, the people who always, they I call them over-likers and over-sharers. Like, they'll sit there and they, it's, it's like a Seinfeld episode. It's like, I don't know, George, I think she's an over-liker. And Kramer's like, she's an over-liker. But then they just <laughs> like everything and you go, holy crap, like you can't like everybody's post. Cheryl, what, what, tell me, because you're a PR too, so you, you probably have a different view of LinkedIn somewhat because you have to spin a story. But what on your personal, like when you go into LinkedIn, what bothers you on LinkedIn? Loves me is that they have the first, second, and third level of like like connections. Why can't we just all take all, like we could just meet anybody we want to. Why does it have to be so fussy? Like why, why like if, if Catherine knew somebody that I wanted to meet, why do I have to bug Catherine to get me through to them? If there's a reason, I mean, I get it. Yes, they're sort of like talking about you before you actually um, become linked to them. I get it, but why can't, why don't we just get rid of all that and just reach out to the person yourself and see if you can get through to them? Why does it have to be um, like putting certain people in an ivory tower and you can't get to them? Why can't we just, that's, that's the one thing that irks me, even yeah, as a PR person. And you can't message some people. Like, I want to message someone from my show, but I'm not connected and I'm not paying, yeah. I'm not paying for the professional thing. I, I, why would I pay no. for LinkedIn? Like, what? You know, so, so how about you, Steve? What, what, what's bothering you about uh, LinkedIn? Let's get riled up, Steve. Let's get yeah. pissed. God damn it. What's riling you up? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's just noisy, right, Steve? I mean, it, whether it's, you know, <laughs> self-promotion or people that are disingenuous, it's just a lot of noise. And I think it's changed. It, hasn't always been that way but it just i i want to see the good stuff right and you don't always get that i don't again political views and people's opinions about things and i don't know that's not what i'm looking for on linkedin i'm looking to make connections with other business professionals to help each other right and to grow and yeah there's a lot of nonsense 
Okay. Well, here's a question. I started this segment earlier uh, in the show, and then people really like it, and I enjoy it. And then we're going to start with you, Catherine, because you already mentioned a book that made a difference. I always like to hear what, because I don't read business books. I'll be honest, I don't. I, I don't have the time for them. But what's a book, besides the one you mentioned earlier, Catherine, mm -hmm. what's a book that has made an impact? It could be, it could be a autobiography it could be this it could be that but what's a book and i'm not going to say change your life because i don't think a book changes anybody's life but i think books can make an impact but what's a book that's made an impact on you and we'll start with you catherine because you brought up a good book earlier um well i love reading um so i love history books but i would say one that i think made an impact on me uh, and Steve, because he does meditation, might enjoy this, but it's called The Morning Miracle by Hal Elrod. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's it's very enlightening for um, just kind of having a routine and having and starting your day with this routine just to kind of get you into uh, whether it's exercise, spiritual, meditation, reading, journaling. There's like six different things that you do. And it's made a difference for me because it's gotten me up at 5.30 in the morning, which I was never a morning person, still am not, but I do get up and um, and it just starts my day on a more positive note than years ago where it'd be like, uh, you know, snooze button, snooze button, snooze button. Okay, how about you, Steve? The first that comes to mind is a book called Essentialism. And yeah basically the discipline pursuit of less right so it's like mm -hmm. we can do all this stuff but typically we're doing too much and not enough of the right thing so that that definitely had a huge impact just on perspective it's like do i really need to be doing this and you know it it's a great book if you're struggling to kind of figure out what to focus on and the more we can like focus on the crucial critical stuff that's important the better off we are and it keeps you, you know, less distracted. So I'll go with that. I, I mean, I, there's a lot, but that's the first that's coming to mind. Okay, yeah, it's how, good. How about you, Cheryl? I don't read a lot of nonfiction. So um, that's, that's a tough question for me. I was a literature major in school because they didn't have a journalism major. So I've read everything. <laughs> uh, and I think that the, I mean, I do want to read the morning one that you talked about, uh, Catherine. So offline, please let me know that one. I need to be a morning person. The one book that <laughs> in my life was Great Gatsby because that was the first time literature really clicked with me in a pop culture kind of way. Um, but I, I, I cannot answer that question about what nonfiction book moved me. Um, that's fine. That's fine. You know, and I, I'll tell you one thing, since you're a liter literature major, I'll piss you off. I think On the Road was overrated. I thought Kerouac's On the Road was very overrated. But we'll talk about that another time. I don't want to piss off a literature major. because You want to have a literature read. show or any no. kind of writing? We have writers on. I'm happy to go on and hold my own and arm wrestle them about different books. I'll give you on Kerouac. <laughs> but uh, but uh, On the Road, are you, do you think it's a little overrated, Cheryl? Yeah. I mean, that whole, yes. Okay. But at right. the time, it worked. All right, but see, I'm not wrong. Okay, here's here's the final question. I always ask this, and I always, as my mom would say, you meet someone because you're all professionals. You all you all done well in your careers. You meet someone, as my mom would say, that's bright eyed and bushy tailed. They could be getting out of trade school. They can be starting a new job. They can be getting out of college, high school. It can be one of your kids. But what advice do you give them to navigate what they're going to run into as they proceed into the work world? And what is good for them to succeed? What do they need to know? Steve, what would you tell someone, kids, uh, neighbor's kid, a 45-year-old person who's changing their career, what would you tell them is important for them to navigate? Because the work world's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, there's probably a lot. We don't have enough time. But I mean, I think is you can't do it alone. Don't be a lone wolf. Ask for help. Somebody is in... The position you either want to be in or are striving to get to right so they figured it out so ask somebody how'd you get there don't be afraid to ask questions don't be afraid right like nobody knows you know what you don't know but you're never going to find out unless you ask and people want to help you and to get over the maybe fear of asking for help 
for fear of looking, you know, hey, I'm not smart enough, right? But somebody knows what you need to know to get where you want to get. So I would just say, ask for help. Use your support group. How about you, Cheryl? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, for my company's 10th anniversary, I had an event for college students, mostly women, um, and it was what I wish I knew then. Mm. And I had, I'm going to do it again because some people have asked me to do it. I had a panel of really, really great women, some very successful, some just working, but I had all different kinds of people and the col and that was what I would love to, you know, and I teach at Temple, so I get this question all the time. Like, what do I need to know? Um, the two things I can go on and on about what I tell my, what I tell students, actually, there's three things. Mm -hmm. um, if you have social graces, you can get in anywhere, say please and thank you and be genuine, have manners and your social graces. Um, make eye contact when you talk to somebody. Um, there are no excuses. If you, if you are on the spectrum, learn how to do it. You know, I've had that said to me with students. And, and that there's nothing wrong with being on the spectrum because I have people in my family that are uh, on the autism spectrum. And the one thing today that I'm learning when I meet uh, a young person is they would do anything other than pick up the phone to talk to somebody. They'll text them, um, they'll send emails and they don't wanna pick up the phone. Um, so the three things I would tell them, social graces have manners, eye contact, look at somebody when you're talking to them and pick up the phone, don't text when you need to get some information from somebody. Okay, how about you, Catherine? Hmm. Um, well, getting out of your comfort zone is uh, very challenging and it's easy to, easier said than done. Um, and I'm, I'm, my husband and I right now are, are, are right in this currently with his um, youngest daughter who um, we're trying to get her into some internships through college in her in her uh, summertime, and and it is it's very interesting that we somebody might say we're pushing her, I say we're encouraging her, and it's getting her out of this comfort zone, and she enjoys being in a cocoon. So I don't know when that happened. Like you said, Cheryl, there's just like this. They don't want to socialize. They don't want to talk. And um, and I'm proud of her because she's come a long way since since the pandemic, where you know I just want to be in my cocoon, and I just feel that um, if I can help her, just create some confidence in her, and um, and know that because I I try so hard to say when I was your age I was doing this and this you know I don't want to do that. Um, so I also have to realize that I'm learning from her as well. And I'm learning, you know, how to, how to approach her, um, as a generation, uh, Z, um, and that my job is to make her, you know, if I can, a strong, independent woman, and, uh, hopefully I'm not, I'm not pushing her too much, but I think I'm hoping too, that by example, of seeing that Anthony and I work and we work hard, but we play hard, you know, we have fun and we're social creatures and everything that we're hoping that we're good role models for her. All right, well, this is great, guys. This, this, this is really fun. I always like talking to professionals. I always hate to call myself a professional. I don't feel like, I feel like, like a schlub in a, in a hoodie. Um, Steve, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, I mean, reach out on LinkedIn, right? If it works for you, if you're if you're still there, absolutely. Or, you know, feel free to give me a call. You have my number. How about you, Cheryl? How can people get in touch with you? Um, easy way through Media Friendly PR, just like it sounds, dot com. Um, and I'm on LinkedIn, just reach out to me. I would love to talk to you, whoever wants to talk to me. How about you, Catherine? Thank you. Um, LinkedIn, uh, or just go right on HFM, uh, investment advice, no, hfmadvisors.com. And uh, I'm on there. You can reach me that way. Okay. And people, you can reach me at the coop tank at yahoo.com. Uh, if you want to advertise on the show, reach out to me. You know, the people who are on the show are 
professionals that are shakers and movers in the industry and the people who watch the show are the same. So isn't that a great way to get your brand out? Just knowing it, I can give you a nice spiel. I can give you a 30 second. I'll write you some copy. Also, uh, go to YouTube. Look for The Coop Tank. Uh, go rate it. Subscribe. There's a new week uh, episode every week. Uh, my entertainment podcast. I'm close to episode a thousand. Uh, some great Emmy winners, Oscar winners, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers. Awesome. That's, that's CooperTalk.net. Uh, February 24th, Saturday. I'm at Pizzeria Uno on a great comedy show. It's 65% sold out. So reach out to me on LinkedIn if you're interested in getting tickets. You buy them in advance. And then on March 30th, with Cheryl's husband, we have laughter and lyrics, and it's a great show. I'm doing 15 minutes up front of comedy. Her husband, Hygel. We'll be doing a 30 or 35 minute acoustic set. Then I'll sit down and I'll interview him and we'll tell some 80 stories. It's a great night. It's a place in uh, Metford called Studio 67 Metford. It's BYOB, so that's always good. So you can reach out to that way. Also, I want to thank Joe Gangemi and Rich DeSisto from Sweet Recording. Reach out to them. Check out their website, sweet, S U I T, recording.com. I'm Steve Cooper, and I will talk to you all next week. <laughs>